Guys, Red Alert, the brand new, highly anticipated Elden Ring DLC trailer just dropped. And don't worry, Bandit's here to break it all down for you. Also, you may notice that this was already uploaded earlier today and then taken down. That's because I found all of the interviews that held additional lore information, as well as the website description, that changes quite a bit of my initial thought processes after I went live with the initial trailer analysis. <gasps> Guess I was just being a little too diligent breaking it all down after it dropped, forgetting to scour the internet for other sources of information. The updated trailer breakdown, considering all currently available information, is as follows. The trailer opens with a shot of an unknown character facing away from the camera. At first I thought this could be Melina, but the robes and boots don't match exactly, leaving me to assume this is an unknown new character since it's unlikely it's the player character as they show them off later in the trailer wearing all sorts of different armor. We also have a voice line most likely from this individual, which actually does mean that it could be Melina, but more on that later. This individual is facing the very spot where the new DLC area will take place, or at least where it will begin, the throne room of the Mogwin dynasty where Moog stole his little half-brother Mikola away and entrapped him within a cocoon, only revealing his withered arm jutting out. A narrator begins speaking and says the words, pure and radiant, he wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men, most likely referencing the new villain of the Realm of Shadow known as Mesmer the Impaler, which we will visually see and discuss a bit more later on. To shrive means to hear a confession and absolve sin by assigning a penance. Then the narrator says, there is nothing more terrifying, which puts a very dark spin on Mesmer's judgments, meaning he is either cruel to those he would cleanse or merciless. After a cut to black, we open to a shot of the new Shadowlands realm that we will be transported to upon touching Mikola's arm in the DLC, which even after researching the interviews with Miyazaki regarding the DLC is still a complete mystery as to how it was created and how it ties into the lands between directly. We know it takes place in the same universe and was at one point connected directly before being disconnected somehow. The website details the land of shadow as a place obscured by by the Erd Tree, where the goddess Merica first set foot, a land purged in an unsung battle, set ablaze by Mesmer's flame. It was to this land that Mikola departed, divesting himself of his flesh, his strength, his lineage, of all things golden. And now Mikola awaits the return of his promised lord, which I can only assume is either you, the player character, or Moog, I guess? One of the biggest questions I have after reading that is when Mikola left to the Land of Shadow, and if Mikola is in the Land of Shadow, is this, what, just his empty body or something? We don't have specific answers to this stuff just yet. But back to the trailer. The player character zooms past on Torrent with this new city in the distance and gallops towards it through a field of ethereal tombstones. And I can only assume this is indicative of Mesmer's judgments and what he does to those he deems unholy. Perhaps he kills them and their dead spirits are trapped here in this world as some sort of penance. We see the ruins of buildings indicating civilization and strange plateaus and cliffs in the distance that have what could be roots sticking out of them, similar to the Sky Islands of Tears of the Kingdom, which heavily implies that these land masses were actually raised out of the ground, calling further into question the physical nature of the Land of Shadows. We are then given one of the most eye-catching shots of the entire trailer, which contains many additional raised land masses with interesting structures on them such as bridges and Greek-looking architecture similar to Moog's palace, as well as the new, bleeding giant tree in the distance that we've seen since the reveal image. Not only do we see more clearly that this tree does not look visually like the Erd tree, which was much more straight and narrow and well, quite frankly, glowy. But we also notice here that there are giant drapes of light flowing down from the top of this giant tree, spreading throughout the new Shadowlands. It could be that these drapes are hiding this new world away from the rest of the lands between, and that due to touching Mikola's hand, we are given access to what lies beneath them. Although it could all just be within Mikola's mind as well. Also, I feel like we should mention that it's entirely possible that this great tree is actually not the Erd tree at all, but is the Halig tree, which just so happens to be a great tree that Mikola created in defiance of the Erd tree and the Golden Order, which we have explored in the game but never actually seen fully from a distance. It's also positioned in the far north of the map beyond the mountains in the shadow of the Erd tree. If this is the case, remember, the Halig tree was created with Mikola's DNA. 
The substance leaking out might literally be Mikola's blood fused with tree sap. But this is completely speculative and could still be the Erd tree, just the Shadow Realm version, or another great tree entirely, such as the ancient tree called THE Great Tree that we can read about in Elden Ring's lore. After this, we are given several shots of what I assume will be either new characters or, more likely, new bosses coming in the DLC. The first of which is a knight who is wearing a new set of armor not before seen in game, facing away from the camera towards what appears to be a great rune, but it looks much more cohesive and neat and functional than the great runes of the Elden Ring. But who knows, it could just be part of the new rules and presumably new runes that this land operates on. The next shot is of a female character wielding a large sword and wearing golden, form-fitting armor that sports a face on the faceplate. She is staring off into the distance with some of the new lands and sky visible in the background. Her stance leads me to believe that she may be a friendly new character, but you never know with FromSoft. We then get a new shot of another character that appears to be male, positioned in front of some kind of structure with spiral pillars and holding a pot. Not a living jar, mind you, but a new kind of pot while another narrator voice begins to speak, saying, in that forsaken place, blood must spill. The forsaken place assumedly being the Shadow Realm. Then we see another new character, assumedly female, also wearing a face-molded faceplate, lying on the ground face down in a field of white flowers. Before the camera fades to black, the character moves a bit, signifying they're not dead, but rather awaiting our player character. I'm sure for a friendly chat. Next, we are shown presumably the player character inside some sort of dark church or study hall, with papers and literature and pews broken and scattered all around the place. In front of the character is an unknown individual, sitting on a throne facing the audience. We can see many cages in the room, some of which are human-sized, and with this religious inspiration and the narration piece about Mesmer's striving of the hearts of men, I think it's very likely that this place is a church that's used for said penance, or rather, terrifying torture. We then get a closer shot of the person sitting on the throne which appears to be female and adorned in a grand collar piece and robe. They are awake and aware of the player character's approach, and the narrator continues speaking, saying, the blood of your fellows, the Erd Tree faithful, while the camera hard cuts to a new, swampland looking area that the player character, now sporting a different armor set, is galloping through, towards a grand building in the near distance. These fellows who are faithful to the Erd Tree that the narrator is talking about are likely tarnished, who are given life anew by the grace of the Erd Tree. The narrator is either talking about we the players needing to go and shed blood and die in the Land of Shadow, or he's talking about all the tombstones we see everywhere being the tombs of fellow tarnished who have come before us. We are then given a particular shot of a painting featuring an older man, seated, looking worried towards the camera, and behind him an unknown female character with her hand on his shoulder, and with her eyes covered in the grand robe robes she's wearing, she is most likely a finger maiden to whoever this man is, or whatever the new version of that would be with regards to the Land of Shadows. We are then cut to the player character walking through a dimly lit dungeon that has countless jars hanging from the ceiling above. And these jars actually are the same jars that the living jars embody that we've seen in the base game, implying that there's some sort of necromancy happening here with the deceased bodies, which is what living jars are made for, storing, and composed of. We then have a really cool shot of possibly the player inside a man-made dungeon walking upwards on a giant metal pipe suspended by chains with one end resting in molten lava, implying this entire facility has some sort of function, but we can't really tell what that is as of yet. Then we get a shot of one of the new castle towns in the new world, and if you look closely at the entrance, you can spot the same spiral pillars that were positioned behind one of the new characters revealed earlier. Perhaps this character will be awaiting us at the entrance, possibly as a boss fight, possibly as a little piece of advice. We can also notice that there are floating pieces of debris in the background. Another new narrative female this time, speaks, saying they were never saints, they just happened to be on the losing side of a war. Which may be the female sitting on the throne we saw earlier, likely either speaking about the tarnished that have been tortured and killed, or about Mesmer and his followers who assumedly esteem themselves to be saints that have the ability to shrive the hearts of men. I think the part about being on the losing side of a war, mixed with the website's information about an unsung war taking place in the Land of Shadow, tells us that it's possible that Mesmer fought against the Golden Order and Merica, and he and the Shadowlands were banished because of it. The next shot is of a terrifying new boss that also has a fitted face mask that also appears to be living flame animated inside of a body of metal poles held 
held together by chains. There are also horn designs sprouting out from underneath the face mask, which could be representative of Omen, a biological disease from the first game, with religious implications. The next shot is a lovely encounter with a new monster, I'm assuming that can, you know, eat your face. When it rears up, munching away, we can see the moon in the background. Next, we have one of the most interesting looking new characters to come in the DLC, which is a monster that is composed of multiple human bodies, similar to the grafted scions of the first game, but also sporting new red robes and armor, and most notably, a giant, particular lion-looking head, with horns jutting out that also looks very similar to Omen. It also has long, flowing, braided blonde hair, implying that this creature is genetically related to Merica, Mikola's mother, who has iconic braided blonde hair but has also given birth to two Omen-laden children before. That, or it's related to Mikola and Moog. The next shot is of Mesmer himself, followed closely by a red serpent, as he speaks, asking, Mother, wouldst thou truly lordship sanction in one so bereft of light? The fact that he's talking to someone he calls mother in this seems to somehow point to Merica being his mother, since she's kind of the mother of all the other demigods, but more on that in a second. The wide shot of Mesmer more clearly shows the two winged red serpents hanging all over his body, as he readies a fiery magical spell, which looks very similar to the fire of the earlier boss, and stares deeply into our eyes. Also, Mesmer's entire appearance, as in the red clothing and red serpents possibly sprouting out of his body and his fiery red hair, all heavily imply connections to the other members of the demigod family such as Rykard, and therefore all the way up to Merica and Radigan. And due to the IGN interview with Miyazaki, we know that he is supposed to be on the same level as the other demigods from the base game. He's even specifically shown to be sitting on one of the demigod thrones in the official art, meaning it's entirely possible that he's actually a long-lost sibling, perhaps another child of Merica. Next, we get a series of shots showcasing some new gameplay options and weapons and moves and enemies. We first see the player battling some new enemies that are holding candelabras and are adorned with horns, then another shot fighting against an unknown enemy wielding a big butcher knife. Then we have a shot of possibly just another player character wearing the noble set but also possibly the return of a familiar face, Roderica, whose fate was undisclosed at the end of the game, who was first seen in the base game wearing the same noble set but with a red hood, now sporting the blue hood that can also also be found in the game. She even lost her red hood in the base game and begs the tarnished player character to kill the god Merica who cursed them all. So her being here associated with Mikola would make sense. She's positioned in front of some kind of altar out of which grows a very strange looking tree and has lion statues on either side whose faces look very particular, exactly like the lion faced beast we saw earlier, even sporting the same horns on top. And she's casting some sort of new butterfly spell against some enemies approaching her with daggers. Then we get a shot of another player character, Kung Fu, kicking a knight, possibly a Godric or Gelmer, or maybe new type of knight entirely, but while still being within the new lands, implying that some enemies may be following you into the new area. Then we get a shot of most likely the player character again hurtling a giant bomb at some approaching enemies, giving us just a little taste of some of the new weapons and tools we'll be able to use. Another shot of a new armor set and a new bloodborne looking crossbow that can rapid fire machine gun style as a new narrator speaks, saying, Saying, I presume you too are keen to know just what kind Mikola is doing here. Which, I mean, is accurate. We all want to know what he's doing in the Land of Shadow and who the Lord he's awaiting is. Way to tease us, video game fourth wall breaking character. Another shot showcases some of the gorgeous new cliff sides, as well as a new spell that transforms the player character into a giant bear head. Then we get a gorgeous sweeping shot of the player fighting against a woman in a red dress wielding two swords in a field of glowing blue flowers and magical blue sparkles in the air. And if you'll remember, implies an influence in magic in these new lands, so there could be other powers at play that we don't know of, possibly with ties to the Carrion royal family. We then see a new kind of sentinel riding a giant tusked boar and wielding a huge polearm that can call down purple lightning, possibly referred to as the Halig Tree Sentinel. We then see a new monstrous kind of mole hippo looking enemy or boss that can sprout lots of spikes, presumably as an attack, and another skeletal enemy with no face riding a pale horse and throwing a giant boomerang, a bonerang at the player that's most likely a new boss, perhaps the combined bones of the bodies left over from Mikola's dark arts. Next we see a sick shot of an undead man pulling out some sort of shard that's been stabbed through his body vertically. 
taking his head along with it. And if you'll notice, we've actually seen this man before. He's the same man that was shown on the portrait earlier, which we can tell by his stature and the cloak he's wearing, sealed with that particular emblem in the front. This begs the question, though, of what his significance is to the lore, and who the lady is from the portrait and where she is currently. Perhaps she'll be making an appearance in this encounter. Perhaps she's the one who stabbed the man through. A new narrator speaks once again here, saying, Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death. Which is a clear callout again to the tarnished from the lands between, who were all famously stripped of the grace of gold. Clearly, these people really want us to know that the tarnished are coming here to die. But I mean, what else is new? In the next shot, we see the player approaching Mesmer in what I can only assume is the final battle. He leaps towards the character in a brutal jumping forward attack as the narrator continues, in the embrace of Mesmer's flame. When you look up Mesmer's name, apparently it comes from Old German and means knife maker. However, the plot thickens if you then assume that the word Mesmer actually means Mesmer as in Mesmerism. And that would mean hypnotism or irresistible attraction, which, if you'll recall, is Mikola's power, drawing people to him mysteriously and having them do his will in a hypnotic way. Just look at his sister, Millennia. This could imply that there is a very intriguing connection between Mikola and Mesmer, but everything is speculative at this point. As the battle wages between the player and Mesmer in this unknown open arena, another new narrator, female again, speaks, saying, Come now, touch the withered arm, and travel to the realm of shadow. I will not be far behind. May we meet again. Now, upon hearing this voice line and realizing it's from a female in the lands between outside the Realm of Shadow, telling you to travel to the Realm of Shadow, and listening to it over and over again and comparing it to Melina's voice lines, I've realized they sound very similar. Take a listen. There is something I'd like to say. I'm sure he would be much contented. Seeker of the Elden Ring. Come now. Touch the withered arm and travel to the Realm of Shadow. I will not be far behind May we meet again. If this is true, it means that the DLC takes place before Melina dies in the base game, and that she will likely follow you into the Realm of Shadow in order to once again likely assist with leveling up. Although the specific mechanics behind that are currently unknown because presumably we will be absent from the grace of the Erd Tree. But don't get me wrong, it could still be a completely new character. We then get a shot of the logo and one final shot afterwards, an over-the-shoulder shot of a blonde, braided hair, glowing, crown-wearing individual who appears to be cleansing the great tree, as after they motion towards it, it can be seen no longer bleeding, with the drapes of light all completely removed. This seems to pretty soundly be Mikola himself, since the hair and power over what could possibly be the Halleck tree matches. Then we get an amazing new concept image about the DLC and the pre-order notice as the trailer ends. There are understandably many theories to be made about all this information revealed in this trailer, so if you're interested in hearing more about these thoughts and theories, please make sure you're subscribed to stick around for all that coverage in the days and weeks to come. And also leave a like on the video if you're excited for the shadow of the Erd tree. And leave comments below with your finds if I missed anything. That's all I've got for this one, so as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. This is Bandit, signing out. Peace!